Hey you, welcome to the Art of Code. My name is Martijn and today we're going to talk about polar coordinates. So the way we normally describe coordinates is by just starting with one point in 3D space. We call it the origin and then from there we have two directions, an X direction and a Y direction. And then for any point in 2D space we can say, okay, well that point is described by saying Okay, we go a certain amount of steps in the x direction followed by a certain amount of steps in the y direction and that gives us our point. Great, so now this works very well. We're all very familiar with it. This is called Cartesian coordinates. Um, and like I said, it works well for many things. Uh, there is, however, another way of describing a point in 2D space. And that way starts with the distance from the point to the origin. That's our first um, coordinate. And now for our second coordinate, if we just imagine a circle that is centered around the origin and has a radius of distance, um, then we can get our second coordinate by measuring the angle between either the x-axis or the y-axis. Um, and then we describe a point as an angle and a distance. Now this is called polar coordinates. And you might ask yourself, well, why in the world do we need this convoluted way of describing uh, a point in space? Cartesian coordinates work just fine. And that is true, but for some things, like for instance, this flower or these butterflies, polar coordinates are a lot easier to work with. So now the question becomes, how do we get, uh, how do we get these polar coordinates. So how do we go from Cartesian, because usually that's what we, that's what we have. Uh, how do we go from Cartesian to polar? Or how do we go from an XY to an angle and a distance? Now the first one, or actually the second one, the distance is quite easy because the distance is just the length of this vector, right? And we've calculated many distances before and we just have this length uh, function for that. Great. Now for the angle, uh, it's actually a little bit more complicated, uh, but luckily we have uh, a function for that that takes care of the, uh, of the complications and does it for us. And that function is called the ATAN function. So that gives us the angle from wherever we're measuring. So let's really quickly implement this in Shader Toy and, and see what we can do with this. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to normalize these UV coordinates. So I'm gonna do minus 0.5 times I resolution dot XY. Put some brackets around that and then just divide it by I resolution dot Y. So what this does is it gets my UVs uh, centered, at the, centered at the middle and normalized. Um, all right, so now let's make our polar coordinates equals vec2 and then a tan uh, of uv dot x comma uv dot y. And then for the y coordinate, we're going to do the length of our uvs. So now let's have a look at what that looks like. So let's first, let's first actually uh, look at the y component, which is just the length. And that's very straightforward, right? It's black in the middle and it just gets brighter as you get farther away because it measures the distance from the origin. Great. Now let's look at the y, uh, the x component. And the x component looks a little bit more screwed up, um, but we have to realize that like this x component is, is going to be returned in the domain of minus pi to pi. So it goes from minus pi all the way to zero and then it goes from zero to one and then after one it just goes to pi but like you will uh, it will just look uh, white. So if we want to see this entire range here then we would have to divide this whole thing by two pi uh, and then add 0.5 to it. Well actually let me just divide by two pi so now it goes from zero to uh, one half over here and, and on the left side it's still negative. If I add one half uh, then you see the whole range 
Um, but it kind of depends if you want to use trigonometric uh, functions like sine and cosine and you want to actually leave it in the original in the original um, domain. All right. So now polar coordinates are often used to bend patterns into a circle. So if in Cartesian coordinates you made something a certain pattern and you want to bend it into a circle, then then you just instead of using Cartesian coordinates, you just use polar coordinates for your pattern generator. So let's make a pattern in Cartesian coordinates first and then let's bend it. So let me make a zigzag pattern here. So actually, let me uh, make a float x. I do uv dot x times 5 perhaps. And for my zigzag, I'm going to do fract x. Uh, I'm going to do the the minimum of the fractional version, uh, the fractional component of x with the inverse of the fractional component of x. Um, well, maybe I didn't say that right, but uh, that's how you make a zigzag. So now let's let's see what that does. So um, uh, let's make a use a smooth step for this, and I'm going to do zero comma point one comma um, m minus uv dot y. Let's see what that does. Uh, that gives me a big fat error because I forgot a decimal point over here. All right, so that gives me a zigzag pattern. And let me, um, let me also shape that pattern a little bit. So I'm going to do times 0.3 to make it smaller and then I'm gonna uh, add some value to move it away from the zero line because right now it's based on the zero on the y equals zero line I don't want that I want to move it up a little bit all right so now let's see what happens if we instead of our UV our, our Cartesian coordinates we we stick our polar coordinates in there so over here I can just say uh, UV equals and then I have to um, first, well, if I just do this, st uh, equals st, let's see what that does. So that gives me many, many points, and also like it doesn't um, it doesn't wrap properly down here, right? If I make this big, you see that over here it the, the it doesn't loop properly, and that is because we we shouldn't forget that the x coordinate of the po of the polar coordinates is goes from minus pi to pi so i have to account for that uh, if i don't use uh, trigonometry so let's do that so i do x um, divided by 2 pi let's say plus 0.5 so what this does is it brings it from minus pi to plus pi to 0 to 1 and then for my uh, for my y coordinate, I'm just going to leave it the same. So let's see what that does. And look at that, such a cute little flower. And uh, now, so now I can have uh, like I can add more points to the flower. I could uh, I could play around with this here to shape it uh, in different ways. Um, and yeah, so it's kind of cool. And if you wanted to rotate the flower in in um, uh, in polar coordinates that is quite easy so I can just go plus I time over here let's see what that does and now it rotates it for me so a little bit slower um, and yeah so there's there's kind of uh, like cool tricks you can you can add so you could also for instance um, make it twist by just adding the y component to here and now you have a twisted shape how cool is that so that was really quickly how to do polar coordinates uh, let me know in the comments below what you want to see next also if you make something cool with polar coordinates uh, post it down below i would love to see it and either way i will see you next time